this for sure is our last topic. Ichi Inuma spoke up again in an interview in Fatmensu Magazine about Breath of the Wild. And he's hinted at this specific thing in the past, but never really outright literally stated it the way that he did. He has hinted that he said like things like chances are that future Zelda games will be open world or will be will be based on that concept, blah blah blah. Well now he has come out and quite literally stated that every Zelda game in the future is going to be open world based. Period. Mm-hmm. And this is in, in a new article on Fatmitsu. So with that in mind, you well, let's just put it this way. Is this the way you want the series to go? Do you want every game to be open world? Yes and no. Um, yes, because if they can follow it up with a game like Breath of the Wild... Well, they, or keep, keep, they, they keep making Breath of the Wild like right, that high then, quality. Yes. Holy. Then yes. Yeah. But I can understand where people like their classics and don't like the open world and want you know, an old game. I, I just don't think you should pigeonhole yourself into being straight open world if you if you can help it. No, I, I hear you on that. Uh I think he doesn't have any choice but to say that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, Breath uh, of the Wild is so big still to this day that I don't know, so to say only three months later. Right. But like some games aren't still selling this well three months yeah. later. Breath of the Wild is. So I think that he's in a spot where the hype is high. So he's going to say that. And he probably means it right now. Mm -hmm. I think the next game they release, if it's not open world, or if it is open world and doesn't sell very well, suddenly you'll start seeing them be like, oh, maybe not. Maybe it's time. Maybe, Maybe we've had enough time now to go back to the Ocarina of Time formula. Um, of making Zelda games. like Kind of like Nintendo did with Mario. They were making 3D Marios for a while, and then they were like, well, maybe it's time to go back to 2D side-scrolling Mario. Mm-hmm. And it was, and they made a ton of money, and they stopped making 3D Marios. Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. Super Mario Odyssey feels like, now it's time to go back to 3D Mario. Yep. So I, I wonder if for Zelda, forget top-down, forget side-scrolling, forget RPG, forget whatever. Um, right now, I think, is the time for open world again. Yeah. The, the series started out open world then slowly progressed into being more linear and less open and now it's gotten back to being open and I think right now for like the next 10, maybe 15 years, every Zelda game probably will be open world, whether it's mm-hmm. top down whether mm-hmm. it's full 3D, whatever it's going to be open world but I don't think every game for the end of time is going to be I think once he gets to retirement age or once they get to a point where people are getting tired of the open world concept, then they're going to go back. Because mm-hmm. um, Nintendo's proven that we'll do that with their other franchises. So I don't know why they wouldn't do it. And now there's, there's obviously a chance they go forward. They do something entirely new that we don't expect. I don't know what else there is to do right. besides linear and open. I don't know what's in between. An open linear? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I guess people would argue, well, how can we know of time? Because you can do dungeons out of order. Yeah, but, but it's still a pretty linear game. Yeah. So it's kind of like I, I don't know what's in the, what's after open world. Open open world? Yes. The universe? The, the open world with the open world. It, it, they're going to no man sky Zelda. Yep. Oh god, please don't. <laughs> not not just because some people don't like no man sky. It's just it's, that's too big. It's too much. I I my brain couldn't handle that much Zelda. <laughs> Imagine Breath of the Wild like the size of that X 10,000. I I I don't know if I can handle Jesus. it. I don't know if I could. I, I don't even know if I can handle this right now. <laughs> so much. So much. Um, so I think he had to say it and he means it. And that's the way it's going to be for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's forever. Oh, right. And I understand. Um, that. It might not even. Heck, for all we know, they're working on a top-down game. And it's not even open world in that. So then it doesn't even last a game, <laughs> technically. And maybe he, maybe he doesn't specify it this way, but maybe he just means console 3D Zelda games. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we don't know exactly w- in what context he means it because the Switch is a hybrid and we don't know how long the 3DS is going to survive and if there is a successor to the 3DS while they're doing the Switch. Like, we, we don't really know what the future of their handheld gaming is beyond the fact that, well, the Switch is obviously going to be around. Mm-hmm. But are they going to keep the 3DS going? Or is there going to be another Zelda game on 3DS? Like, we don't know these things. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So yeah, because it would be kind of hard, I think, to have a really wide open world. Eh, no, I guess no. The would, original yeah. Zelda worked just fine doing that. Yeah. So they can, I, I, and they try doing it a little bit in the Link Between Worlds. So I, I, I kind of forgot about like Monster Hunter and stuff yeah. like that. That's on 3DS, and yeah. that can Monster that's Hunter's pretty amazing. Wide open world. Yeah, so they can do it. I I don't. I don't know what they're going to do, obviously. Um, but as a Zelda fan, I, at least for now, because of how much I love Breath of the Wild, this excites me. Because mm-hmm. I always felt that Zelda should have been open world all the time. It started open world, it was the definition of open world, then it got away from it. And I never understood why. Because outside of Ocarina of Time, and eventually Twilight Princess, when you combine all the sales... Zelda, The Legend of Zelda, the first game, was the best-selling Zelda game of all time for the longest period of time, and it's like, why did you get away from the open world? So that's why I'm glad they well, came I mean, back. I can understand testing the waters to kind of see how other things work. But, but testing the waters for 25 years? No, no, no. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. That's, if you started testing the waters and then yeah, went yeah. back to the original, I can understand that. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It took this long to get back to that concept. They've proven it's successful. They've proven it's what gamers want. They've proven it's what... Mm, I'll, a lot of I won't even say most, but a lot of Zelda fans want was this. Well, that's the and now people now people now. want now what people seem to want to happen is this and more. They want this and the return of big dungeons. They want this mm-hmm. and the return of an antagonist. They want this and the return of this and the return of that. Like start bringing other elements of Zelda into the open world and make it new and fresh again, uh-huh. um, which they can. That's the door is there. It's open. Yeah, I think it. that's kind of probably why they went this route, just yeah. so they can bring in other. Yeah, aspects I, I think and... the big focus in Breath of the Wild was world. Adventure physics. Yep. Get all that right. Worry about the rest in the next. <laughs> That's a definite possibility. And the thing is, the game's already fantastic with that. So I can't imagine if they actually brought in like the next evolution of Zelda Dungeons. Like, like the Divine Beasts were cool and everything, but mm-hmm. it didn't feel like an evolution of Zelda Dungeons. Mm-hmm. So if they can make a, the next evolution of a Zelda Dungeon, like a huge, massive one, like something we've never seen before. In an open world, all right. I think that's the next step, to be honest, personally. And I'm not even someone that thinks they need to do that, but I, mm-hmm. I think that's the direction they're probably thinking. Oh, the more than likely. And maybe we'll, that's what we'll see. Like in the Breath of the Wild DLC, the one dungeon that we get, maybe that is like their proof of content. That's them testing the water. Okay, now this is what our next step is going to right. be. And this is like right. a taste. Yep. Please look forward to our next LED. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it just blows our mind. Or we finally find out, oh, Calamity Ganon wasn't the big bad guy. There's somebody else. <gasps> oh, yeah. Good, since that dark beast Ganon thing was, I don't, you haven't done it yet, no, but it, it's not, it, it, it's I've heard boring. it was a joke, yeah. I, I don't know why they even included it. it would, the fight would have been fine if they just ended it when they did. Well, when you beat Calamity Ganon. They didn't, mm-hmm. have to, they didn't have to go to Beast Ganon or just Ganon. Like, yeah. The fight wasn't good. Yeah. Anyways, so, I'm excited. I think this is the way Zelda should be. Um, not forever, though. Not forever. I don't think. Yeah. I think I I want yeah. like I keep thinking in my mind like when would I want them not to do it? I don't know. I love open world, so that, right. I always want right. them to I mean, do it. But I'm but, sure there'll be a time where they kind of dip back and they'll. How about this? Here's an example. I still want more multiplayer Zelda games, but I don't want them in an open world. Mm-hmm. I like the level based way that Triforce Heroes went. Yes. I, I, yes. So I want to see more multiplayer Zelda, and I don't want to see open world unless they make my dream come true. The MMO RPG Zelda. Oh. Just like I think an MMO RPG <laughs> Pokemon needs to exist, an MMO RPG Zelda that I can get behind oh, multiplayer that and would Zelda. Be awesome. That I mean, would imagine be just awesome. imagine the world of Breath of the Wild as an MMO RPG, where you can play as Pokemon and. Yeah, everything else. I think I just found a new video topic. I'm going to be talking oh, about yeah. about why Zelda should be an MMORPG. But yeah, it. I, I think they're onto something here. They need to then. EJ Noma's grabbing onto it and riding the wave, and I hope that wave keeps going for a long yeah. time because this is the way I thought Zelda always should be. I'm glad it's back to being this way. Now let's see what they can do with it. Now, now that they've proven the open world and the physics and everything, now let's see what they can do next. Mm-hmm. How are the, how can they make that even better? Right. Um, and that's so exciting to think that it can do better. If you remember our review of Breath of the Wild, you could check out our, our YouTube card here if you're listening on the audio version. You know, I'll try to throw a link down in the description on this episode for it. Um, to just listening into the aspects that I criticized about Breath of the Wild during our review and reading about it and just 
soaking it all in. For everything I said Breath of the Wild could improve upon, it was just further proof that Nintendo has nailed down the core concepts. Now they need to take that next level. And a lot of what we talked about in that review was about what they could do to take it to that next level. Mm -hmm. How Breath of the Wild can outdo Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to do that now, but they can do that with the next game. Right. Um, So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited that they're not. This isn't a one and done thing. Nintendo with Zelda is famous for their one and done ideas. This is not a one and done idea. No. So I'm happy. I'm happy they have more ideas and more things coming. Good on you guys. And I guess that that's gonna do it. This is what episode twenty seven, I think. Yeah. So it is. Yeah. Yeah. I guess suppose wrap up like we normally do. Sure. Yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in to the Nintendo Prime podcast. Uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes. I know this isn't normal because I usually don't say that, but no, you yeah. can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. Uh, you just look up the Nintendo Prime Podcast. We pop up with your only search result because we are the only Nintendo Prime Podcast. <laughs> uh, not the only Nintendo Podcast, of course. Yes. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Ninty Prime. You can follow me on Twitter at Nate Chance. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Nintendo Prime, all one word, camel case style. And, yeah, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Uh it's been great. It's been fun. E three is almost here. Yeah. Like I'm uh, when this episode goes live, I'm actually on vacation, but I don't care. Yeah. No. Yeah, well. Because the whole time I'm on vacation, I'm gonna be playing with my kids and having fun and be thinking. E three. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna waste so much energy on that vacation, being all excited for E three and like, oh, I'm at a water park. I'm so pumped for E three. I'm so pumped. <laughs> I gotta go down the slide. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Nice. Waste all my energy. I'm going to come back Sunday night, start getting ready for, for Monday, and getting all our pre three stuff, getting ready for the show. And I'm going to be like, oh my God, I wasted everything. <laughs> Maybe right. I should just take this Monday and sleep for 20. Uh... You're right. Yeah. Mm. Right. Anyways, thanks for tuning in to the Tender Prime podcast. Right. We'll catch you next well, week. I was going to say, don't forget your Patreon. Oh, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey, I didn't talk about it this episode. Yeah. Are you going to try to remind me now every episode? I, I am. Forget? Uh, so yeah, we have a Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Nintendo prime. So we can go specifically, it, it helps support this podcast. Um, but it also supports other content we do, whether it's the news post at the site or other videos that we make. It generally just helps support the existence of Nintendo prime. Uh, we finally got our first $5 subscriber. Thank you. I don't remember his name. I think it's Josh. I'm not 100% sure. Um, because it hit me in my email inbox and I haven't gone look. And at the five dollar level, you get early access to this podcast. Actually, not the video version. Sorry, yeah. the video version we can't get edited fast enough for that. But you do get access a day early to the full audio version. It's the full podcast, so like you can listen to the entire podcast and then tune back in for the video versions. Yeah. So you can actually see like our facial expressions. Like when you just heard me like snoring in the microphone, like yeah. hey, yeah, yeah, you can actually see what that looked like on camera after you already know what happened, yeah. or you can just not and just yeah. enjoy the audio version. That's fine. Um, and that's just one of the many perks. We, we have some stretch goals on there. Like, we hit certain funding levels. We get new shows and new equipment, new this and new that. Uh, we're all about just trying to make content you care about. If you have ideas, like, if you're like, hey, look, if you can dedicate to doing this, I will support you on Patreon. Let us know right. what, ideas you, what ideas you have you would like us to explore. Or topic for here. Or even topics for the podcast. We do take fan topics as well. You can submit those to Nathan at NintendoPrime.net. Uh, you can try to comment them in the comments below. But sometimes we get so many comments, I probably won't catch it. I know I do, like, talk. Like, if you ever see Nintendo Prime in the comment section, that's me. I'm the one talking. But uh, I, you know, I, I don't read every comment. I, I'd like to say I do. I try to, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and I, I want to also say a big thank you, not just to our, our Patreon supporters. We have three backers, I think, right now, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also want to just say thank you to you guys, the viewers. Last week, uh, it was the highest viewed podcast we have ever had here on YouTube. No, oh, yeah. Not our highest viewed on the audio version, which is okay. Maybe that'll change if, if we get more Patreon backers. But on YouTube, you know, uh, if you combine all our segments together, we had like something like 10,000 views. Uh, we usually average like a, a few hundred and maybe like a thousand total. So <laughs> right. it, 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 it was just a great week. Um, who knows how many people you know saw it this week at this point, but I just really want to say I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, and again, I know I, I keep hearing the request to get that third person on here. I'm aware. Um, look forward to that after E3. I've been talking to some people, but a lot of people right now are wrapped up and trying to get 
ready for travel plans ready for E3 or getting their own shows and their own stuff together and running their own stuff. Um, but once we get past E3, um, I actually, I believe the week after E3, I am going to be looking into making sure that we have a dedicated third person every single week. Um, it's always good to have more opinions on the show. Oh, definitely. Um, and in fact, we actually had a couple fans email in about their interest in potentially being on an episode or two. And oh, nice. I did read your guys' emails. Our wing and uh, who who we saw before made a comment, you know, about uh, you didn't see. I saw in a live stream that we did, but was saying how how you wanted to collaborate. Um, so I, yes, I did get your email, and then there was an email from another fan. I believe it was the one who sent in the fan topic, who said he actually wants to come on the podcast to talk about Metroid. Okay, yeah. Um, so that would be great. So again, I think this will be. I'm going to say those conversations. Obviously, this is the the week before E3 podcast, right. so. We're to save those conversations for post E three, especially you know if a Metroid gets announced, that gives us a whole new conversation. To oh talk yeah, about for Metroid. Uh, but again, we this podcast should only get bigger and better as we grow. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you want to help us grow, go support us on Patreon. It allows me to dedicate more time to making sure this podcast becomes the best that it possibly can. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Nathaniel Ruffle Jansen. This is Eric Bourne. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>